Hello everyone and welcome to a video on the YouTube channel. I'm going to be doing YouTube a bit more frequently now. I don't know the exact cadence and the exact style of videos we're going to be uploading a bunch of, but I recently got into the Daybreak Magic Online creator program and I wanted to create some content with like this sort of stacked account I got. And so thank you so much to them for supporting the content. But one of the things I know I want to do is I want to have some amount of gameplay videos. You know, in the past I've tried just only doing gameplay type stuff. Or I tried only doing, you know, like conversation based stuff. And I think the truth is I really want to be able to sort of create the stuff that I want to make. And that was always in my guiding light. And recently I finally got the time to actually be able to create some content. So that's what we have today. I'm going to talk about this deck a little bit here, this Pioneer Pact deck, and show some gameplay of it. So my friend Rachel played in an RCQ. I believe she lost in the semifinals with. She's a very strong player won the SCG Philadelphia about two months ago at the time of this recording. And in general, I thought this deck was a really cool and unique place to be in Pioneer. I think there are some things that make sense about this being good against certain parts of the format. And so I wanted to really play a game with it and then talk about it with y'all um, and show some gameplay. So that's what we're going to do. So this is a control deck that is trying to win the game by using every single mode on Demonic Pact except lose the game. And then you cast Harmless Offering and hand them the Demonic Patch. The only option they have left is lose the game. This strategy has been one that we've seen every now and again in Magic since they released Demonic Pact. Demonic Pact is such a unique and cool card in that way. And these donate style decks historically have been very popular in Magic. But they're often a little weak and take some time to assemble. This deck has some things going for it that help uh, in those regards and make it a bit more viable. Some of the ways that have really helped with that are things like Beseech the Mirror on screen here, which the long story short is you can put a card in your hand, or if you bargain it, which is sacrificing an artifact or enchantment, you can find the spell and cast it if it's mana values four or less. This is actually a great way for us to find Harmless Offering and play it on turn. It's also a great way to sort of sack your Demonic Pact so that you don't lose the game if you can't actually Harmless Offering it to them. You know, we only have two offerings. Now we have a lot of pseudo copies of Harmless Offering, but we don't have a ton of actual Harmless Offerings. So this card really helps one be a buyout from the pack killing us and two give us access to the offering while also you know just being something that lets us find an answer in our deck. The other one is the case of the stashed skeleton. This card makes a skeleton and then when the skeleton leaves the battlefield you can then spend one to black and sacrifice this card to search your library for any card you put in your hand basically a demonic tutor. This is a great way to find harmless offering. A lot of times you'll just use one of the pack modes of deal four damage deal it to the skeleton, and that will solve your case of the stash skeleton. You search your deck for a harmless offering and hand them the demonic pact. Um, besides that, our deck is just interaction spells and ways to find cards. The one difference I had uh, from Rachel's list is I have cling to dust in my main deck, and I have my second crocs on the sideboard. She had a second crocs in the main deck, and I believe a different graveyard hate card in the sideboard. I wanted to try sort of leaning more in on the like my opponents are going to try to answer this stuff and be able to bring in the Croxus cards. Um, and then the Cling to Dust is just a fairly well positioned card that's like a cheap cantrip. And I felt like this deck could have really afford to like basically use one more land, but none of the like Zendikar DFC lands were really that good. So Cling to Dust was my way of sort of meeting in the middle while also being a way to gain a little bit of life. You know, you are kind of this clunkier control decks or having something that can gain you, you know six life over the course of the game isn't the end of the world uh besides that we have a bunch of interaction here at the one mana spot just fatal push and torch the tower for early creatures and then thought seize for anything else pretty standard stuff in that regard um we have maze mind tome this is just a way to sort of smooth our draw we don't want a ton of them because we need interaction um and cards like treacherous blessing which we'll get to in a second gifts give us more cards and our bargain fodder not actually sure how strong this card is going to be. This seems like sort of a concession to Beseech the Mirror. You need to have, you know, something in play. But Blessing, drawing three cards in the next turn, spinning a life, and then being able to tutor up your Wrath, for example, an Extinction event, is very strong. So I'm down to sort of see how it goes. I imagine it's a card that gets cut a lot, especially against aggressive decks. Um, Shieldix Edict is actually a spell that is... Fairly well positioned in some matchups and pretty poorly positioned in others in Pioneer right now. If you look at Vein Ripper, that is a creature that's pretty hard to answer, um, especially for a deck like this where we don't have you know creatures to sacrifice to the ward, let alone spells that actually kill it. All of our removal spells are trying to get around Vein Ripper uh, is claws in that regard. And then you know the Edict, it's not super great against stuff. 
like Amalia, but it has other moments where it does shine. So a little bit of give, a little bit of take. Uh, sort of hard targeting, I think, the Vampire's decks with this choice. So you could mix it up a little bit if you wanted to. We're playing Fable of the Mirror Breaker because we are a red deck in Pioneer. This card does forgive all sins. Uh, and that's basically it when it comes to the main deck. The, as for the sideboard, um, we have a lot of, you know, just sort of cards to make small changes and sort of tweak our deck to be a bit better versus what our opponent's doing. You know, Duress for decks that are heavy on non-creature spells. Blot Out is another way to have an Edict effect that answers creatures. You know, Heroic is a deck we hadn't mentioned before, but that's one that, you know, does a good job of protecting their creatures. And if you just have an Edict style effect, that's really good. Go Blank is great for these graveyard decks like Phoenix. Our combo doesn't work until turn seven so that's gonna really slow us down um in the combo we match up so we need to pick them apart so necromentia you know typically is a card that more buys time it very rarely actually ko's the deck but sometimes it does anger is just another cheap board wipe good against things like phoenix ashiok a way to slow down some of those combo decks some of those graveyard stuff crox is sort of a pivot plan if our opponent has a lot of things that are interact well with us this is a card that can kind of grind and torpor orb is a card to sort of stop some of these decks that are really relying on creatures um, worth noting Croxa plus Torpor Orb is a bit of a combo. You can Torpor Orb on like two and then cast Crox on three. It's uh, ETB effect will not trigger, so it won't get sacrificed. So you turn four, you're attacking with Croxa. It's pretty interesting, got me pretty interested in maybe trying to build something along that line, although that's pretty all in. So, you know, this deck obviously is also a little bit more, you know, ambitious looking. I'm going to be curious to see sort of how it actually plays. But, you know, it does have a lot of good things going along with it. So, let's we'll see. Uh, make sure to follow the channel and click subscribe. The rest of this is going to be pre-recorded gameplay footage. Hopefully, y'all enjoy this sort of thing. I'm going to be trying a bunch of different stuff, so you might really like something, so let me know. If you don't like something, also let me know. I sort of want to, you know, try different things and figure out what makes me the happiest and makes y'all the happiest and sort of meet in the middle. So, thank y'all so much for watching, and enjoy the rest of the video with some gameplay. Rosh Mobo has no chance of doing anything against us. Yeah, maybe it's fun. Hmm. Not for me to decide. I also like griefer cards. Oh, we're gonna die to this deck again. Oh yeah, there's no way. I don't play any decks to beat this for fun. And I barely play decks in tournaments to beat these decks. What is your win con? So uh I have Demonic Pact, which is the like it has four modes, and well, the last one is lose the game, and I'm handing them this. Target opponent gains control. So I'm going to give them the pact. A little gift from me to you. I think Pioneer Burn is very good. I think a lot of people also are not prepared for Pioneer Burn, which helps make it the sauce, Bob. Also, Bob, how you doing? You excited to play Crab Game? <laughs> the art on this is so cool what are you gonna do Pfft, kill me the gruel prowess deck is also very good bob i don't know if you've seen it i can pull it up real quick i got shown it earlier today It like won a challenge or something. Nice try, opponents. I'm like, yeah, sack a creature. It is just like creatures and pump spells. I actually don't know if it won. It might have just got first with the Swiss. I think they fixed the bug. But to be honest, I'm unaware. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kill, they, they made a new Kiln Fiend KM that has haste and has this ability called plot. And what plot does is you exile it. And at any point when you can play a sorcerer, you can cast the card after this turn. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, why am I taking a billion damage? <laughs> oh, my one change. Call me an innovator. Wow, 
Honestly, they do not have a ton of uh, creatures. We are in a bit of trouble. But we'll deal with that when the time comes. God, I wish I had a fatal push. That'd be such a sick play. Just be like, oh, I'm going for it. You want to push? Oh, am I just dead? I think I'm just dead. Oh, no, I'm at three. I'm at three. Okay. Good. Sure. Odd. I pass. They draw a land. Request for the Holy Relic, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> um there are no creatures in the yard, so our torch our claim to dust is not looking pretty good here. Well, I can turn from day to night and draw a card and gain a one life, which might be the world. Are you telling me my deck full of unplayable cards isn't doing very well against the hyper efficient deck? Like, it's really hard to know. <laughs> like, what am I supposed to infer? I think I only need one of these. <laughs> that's true. Cam, that's why you're the best. It's in the name. Oh, adding. Oh, I got Thought Season here, my friend. Oh, I even drew it for you. That way you could see that I had it. I got Fable. Torch the Tower is format playable. You know what? I'm going to keep. You're a tuner. I hate that I'm doing this. Fable is playable. Fable. Fable's a nice one. What is the Fable equivalent in Marvel Snapchat? Hope Summers? No, this is this is Shang-Chi. <laughs> I, I guess it isn't as splashable. But yeah. Jeff. <laughs> All the red decks have it. The baby wan shark. Two three. Huh. What are you gonna do? Kill me? If Hero's Downfall was good. Wow. Well, no one in chat bring up to him about Hero's Downfall. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, this it, it's pretty good. I think we're just supposed to double kill spell this turn. Just do a little, like... Let's just, you know what? Let's just do it all this turn. I clicked the wrong black card. Ooh, Witch Stalker's Frenzy is still in their deck. Lucky for me... Um, so my guy trades with that, so we'll get rid of the Lava Runner. I'll torch the tower on the one, two, and then I'll Fatal Push this. And then I'll attack for two. And then my Fable the Mirror Breaker will trade off. 
and life will be good. They don't have the sure, sure. I don't know how I, I yeah. It does let them do that, that's for sure. Oh, that's a 5-3. Maybe a 3-3. Three, three. Huh. Yeah, maybe just firing off my Fatal Push immediately was bad. We were going to F6. Forgot they played this card. Even though I just died to it last game. I mean, we're going to Beseech the Mirror for a kill spell, so... We just need to dodge. Dodgers in the chat. You can tell how little magic I've played since quitting. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I mean, Torch the Tower is just, you know, a random shock that's like nice because there's a lot of things in the graveyard. What just happened? Oh, they Witch Darker frenzied the Fable thing. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I can bargain this away and just get a kill spell. I should have attacked. Ah, whatever. I'm never going to win via damage. Um, which one do we want to not draw going forward? I guess Anger is now the worst one because... They're all cheaper than Anger, and they do the same thing, because we're just going to die if there are a bunch of creatures, so. Sure! Anger the gods it is, chat! Yeah, I thought the same thing, Bob. Well, we're allowed to have a couple playables. We just have to cut a Thought Seize or a Fable to make room. Swift Spear? I'm so dead to a land, too. I mean, I got this 2-2, two -two, but, like, I'm so dead. Okay, so this thing says, so I can go and search up an answer. I could get like Fling to Dust right now, for example, which might just be the play. Let me just like grab our good friend Fling. Where are you, Fling? Did I accidentally click Fling? Oh, there it is. Very in range to like just be clicking. Oh, what's this here? Yeah, it heals you for four, but I just want to dodge the burn spell for a turn. And if they end up, like, burn spelling this. Yeah, like, I, I'm going to play it now at four. That's fine. And if they draw the stupid... Whatever it's called, plus two, plus zero, and then get the plus one, plus one trample card. We'll just block and be alive, but... It's not even that bad. I was going to say, it's not even that bad to wait because you need to draw the Harmless Offering. We have no way to tutor. Alright. Alright, opponent. <laughs> I'm going to be at plus four life and you're going to be down that something. Don't play Rampaging Ferocidon. I'll cry. I'll do it. Don't think I won't cry on stream. Oh, no, Bob's going to come in with suggestions about making my deck playable. Let me hear him, Bob. Ooh. Oh, I actually had this idea, Bob, about playing either Mardu or not playing the red cards and just playing, like, black-white uh, de demonic pack or blue-black. It's on the list. We'll get around to it, Bob. Well, we're going to play some lands, and lands are pretty strong by default, but we can get some bad ones to make up for it. So that, that'll be good. All right, we're so close, chat. We're on the door to greatness right now. 
Next turn, I'm going to draw two cards. This turn, I'm going to gain three life. I mean, come on. What more do I need? That, that is true. Bob, Bob did do that. Bob was just like, what if I just played Golrion? It's like that meme about um, from Shaq where it's like, sorry, I did not have respect for your game. <laughs> uh, they have, I guess they're never going to have cards in hand. No, I'll, I'll just draw. Okay, well, we could have beseeched for something if we need to now, which is nice. I kind of just want to play the offering and give it to them. They'll make me discard two cards, so I'll have to discard this plus this. And then that gets turns on my cling to dust. One, two, three. Take the kitty. The pack's yours and yours alone. Yeah, yeah, fuck the combo. Let's just deal four more, draw more cards. I mean, we're gonna go to five here. Yeah. Yes, the ne we're going to lose the next game pretty quickly, but even though this ended up being kind of good, I think it was bad to be in our deck, and we were supposed to bring in these duresses, and I just forgot. But we, <laughs> it worked out. We're on the draw now, so now we're on the draw. We want a bit, a bit more mana efficiency, one mana versus two mana. Magic's dope. Ah, Mulligan. Hmm. All right, this hand's good. I think I have to bin this, which sucks because I love value, but killing the two drop on two is going to be important. Yes, all the deep, all Daybreak accounts are DB. So maybe it's Dad Blaster. Who knows? Maybe it's Daybreak. It's hard to tell. Anyways, hashtag sponsored. <laughs> I actually don't think it's sponsored. It's like affiliated. I don't want to mess it up. Get a little scry on? Get a little scrizzy? Oh, that's the brain. I never realized that's the brain on Maze Mind Tome. That's dope. So I could, okay, well that makes it a lot easier to play this this turn, just work towards getting the four life, because honestly, I would love four fucking life. Uh, stop, or, you know, we'll scry at the end of their turn. Yeah, ser we seriously need them to, to scry. <laughs> I need them to just brick and, you know, play like a one, two or whatever. They can have haste. I just need variance to occur to them. Just a little bit of variance. As a treat. 12. Okay. It'd be that way sometimes. 9. It'd be that way sometimes. 
All right, I scribe to the bottom. Ooh. We keep this because it lets us find the stuff. I think we just go fatal push this after they declare an attack and then we'll just draw a card into turn. And we maybe end up beseeching into some nonsense. Cast your pump spell. All right, well, they had to have drawn it that turn because they probably would have cast the rage last turn had they had it. All right, so it makes me think there's like skewer the critics and other nonsense in hand. All right, let's just try and find an untapped land. I'm gonna bottom it because I don't actually need it. <laughs> uh, all right, it's fine. I really don't want to shock. So I'm just gonna play my fable. We're just we're big vibing. We're Joe vibing even. Next turn we'll get our four life from the maze mind tome. We'll be very happy about it. Howdy, Joaquin. How you doing? It is Kiki Jiki on the backside. And we're going to rummage two cards here. We're up to two. It is very strong. It's Oko at home. What, a, what an interesting comparison. I don't even know if you're like wrong, wrong. Yeah, it makes a treasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is nice. Card just has a bunch of points in making sure you always play the game. Is the TLDR in it. Alright, so I'm at seven. They have two cards in hand. We're going to get our scry on. Make sure we draw something we need and gain our four life. Yeah, I think we just actually top this because we're going to need to work through a couple things if we're going to win. Then we're going to discard the one land. I guess I could double this, which is pretty good. And just wait a turn on this. It's actually probably pretty good. Because they just definitely have a bunch of three mana cards. Yeah. So we take the wizards. I guess we take the skewer. Um, they both turn on with one mana enablers. Skewer turns on easier than the others though. So I guess we take it. And then we go lose your creature. And so now we're at eight. They, you know, draw a land. It's pretty nice. Them drawing a wizard is the worst case scenario. But even if they do, we'll have a block on the next turn. Yes, that is MGGO creator. Tron is bad. How are you doing, bud? Why don't you do Wait, can it not win the... Oh, yeah, it can't because it's standard. That's funny. All right, Beseech. All right, we just need one turn where the Pact can just discard two cards and we'll just get two burn spells and we'll just be vibing. This is how Bob won all the money. <laughs> yeah, Bob played against burn decks. I still don't know how Bob beat stupid Hor Aura's deck in like the last round of the Swiss. I walked over there. That shit was crazy and walked away. Nice. Oh, yeah. You gotta watch. You gotta get your daily influencer in. All right. Discard two. Get out of here.
Line up the stage and Wizards Lightning? Unfortunate for them. Wow. And a card that will punish them if they don't do anything. Chat, we've done it. We're turning the corner. <laughs> The Oris deck does suck. That does help. Well, my opponent has only ever done these things when they have a, a trick or whatever, but I'm going to block because I don't really care about my home slice, and I do care about two life. Whoa! My opponent, who's never bluffed attack before, made an attack and had an answer. <laughs> that shit's crazy. Anyways, back to 12. What are they going to do? Attack, right? Just... Being silly by her. Um, there are two modes left on this. So we can go nothing here. This will transform to night. Which will gain me a life and let me draw a card. I could just search up now and give it to them. Let's just do it. Because we've used... Oh, they've, the draw mode hasn't been done. We'll not be doing that. Thought I'd use the draw mode. <laughs> Just a way to lose the game. <laughs> I guess they need to draw like lands or whatever, but. Alright. It is turned from day to night. Time to discard a card and gain one life. And if somehow they have a shatter for this, we'll just sack the pack and grab another one. Just chain packs. Slick shot show off went to exile. Well, Mason hated that, but you only have one card, so I'm not too sad about it. Draw two cards. My my game is lagging. Oh no! <laughs> I'm untapping my mana. Oh, I'm in my upkeep. <laughs> I drew cards off the effect. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> wait, wait, how does bargain work again? It's an artifact. Okay, yeah, yeah. I thought this thought we had a, a, a good deck building situation, but I was unsure. Oh, harmless offering. Choose target opponent, and you can have this. It is but a simple offering I hand to you. Boom! We did it! Gamer, 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 gamer.